Hi guys, Jamie Humphreys here for Six String Alliance and today we have a very special Halloween quick riff taking a look at Bark at the Moon by Ozzy Osbourne as performed by the legendary Jakey Lee. <laughs> Ozzy Osbourne has always had the pick of top rock guitar players when filling his sideman slot. From Randy Rhodes to Jakey Lee and Zach Wilde, who I like to consider to be the big three. But he's also worked with Brad Gillis, Joe Holmes, Gus G and even Steve Vai. Following the tragic and untimely death of Randy Rhodes, Ozzy Osbourne turned to Jakey Lee to fill the guitar position in his band. And it was a bit of a toss up between Jakey Lee and George Lynch. And at one point he nearly went with George Lynch. Now for his third solo album, Bark at the Moon, Jakey Lee was heavily involved with the writing but was sadly never credited and this always seemed to be an underlying rift between the guitar player and the Osbournes. Jakey Lee recorded one final album with the band The Ultimate Sin and then was uh, acrimoniously fired by telephone in 1987 before being replaced by Zach Wilde. During his time with Ozzy Osbourne, Jakey Lee famously played his white Charvel Strat, which was a humbucker and two single coil configuration. And it was also a fixed bridge guitar, which really shaped the way that Jakey Lee played. He also used Marshall amps on that tour uh, for Bark at the Moon. He was using JCM 800s. Now for today's session, I've chosen to use my Music Man Axe is tribute. Once again, I'm running into the Rack of Doom. I'm not really using too much in the Rack today. I'm just using the EP Booster, which as I like to say, adds a bit of secret source. It just kind of fills the sound out a little bit. I've got the gain turned way down on that pedal. I'm on channel two on the JP2C and I've got the shred mode engaged, which just gives you some a slightly tighter bottom end and accentuates the gain slightly. And it's really good for hard rock lead and rhythm sounds. I'm coming out of the speaker output of the JP2C going straight into the two notes Captor X, where I'm using the brownie back speaker I Post effects, I'm using the Sound Toys Micro Shift, which is kind of similar to an Eventide H3000. It does a little bit of detune so you get that chorusing effect and also some slight delay for a, uh, a doubling effect as well. I'm also using a Lexicon Reverb from the UAD. This riff harks back to the classic style of Randy Rhodes and it's a real sound that we associate with Ozzy Osbourne. If you listen to riffs such as I Don't Know and Crazy Train, you can really hear that inspiration and influence within the riff to bark at the Moon. This riff is based around a series of chords with a driving 16th note rhythm which is played on the open fifth string. So it's a, a quite a hard picking workout. I must admit I struggle with this thing quite a lot and it takes me quite a while to warm up to it. So it is a really good picking exercise. The important thing here is to really observe dynamics, keeping a palm mute on the uh, 16th notes and then taking the palm mute away when we play the chords. So you really get to accent the chords and get a great uh, it's a great use of dynamics, should I say. So you really observe the dynamics. So to kick things off, we have a G5 power chord. That's five on the D, seven on the G, and eight on the B. We strike that and move up a whole tone to an A5 power chord. These are both D shapes. So, and then we have these uh, open uh, A string, which we're playing with palm mutes with a 16th note rhythm. <laughs> Following on from the A5 chord, we drop the uh, octave root note, which is played on the 10th fret of the B string, down a whole tone to the flat seven. So we're playing, or implying, should I say, uh, a dominant seventh chord. <laughs> then we have more of those driving open A notes, and then we pull off from the third fret of the A string. So nice and slowly. <laughs> Thank you. 
Then we have the G5 chord and re repeat that rhythm. So we're just going between the G5 power chord and that driving 16th note rhythm on the open fifth string. <laughs> Okay, so on to the next section. This is the really hard bit. We start off with an F triad on the D, G and B strings at the eighth fret. And this just goes to show the sheer guitar excellence and skills of Jakey Lee. This is such an unorthodox uh, style of playing. And it, he's, he was known for these really wide stretches in both his rhythm playing and his lead playing. So we play 10 across the D, G and B. <laughs> Then we play nine on the B, but 10 on the G and the B. So flatten in the fifth. So you go. Then we drop down to five on the D string whilst holding 10 on the G and the B. And then we go back up to the ninth fret of the, uh, of the D string whilst playing the 10 on the B and the G. But in between that, we have to keep the, uh, the muted 16th note rhythm on our open fifth strings, you get this. It's really hard to play. It's a really fiddly section of the riff. And then we're back to our A5 power chord and the, uh, the, the first section of the riff repeats. So. Uh, This time, instead of pulling off from the third fret A, we pull off from the fifth fret A. Then we drop down to the G5 chord. Then we have this little figure, which is first fret A, open A, first fret, third fret, back down to the first fret, open A, open E, first fret E. So. So I'm going to engage a little bit more drive with the shred mode of the JP2C and play that riff just slightly faster, uh, just to give you something to practice along to. But like I said, really pay attention to keeping a very tight, small movement with your picking hand on that open fifth string and taking away those mutes and really accenting those power chords to give the riff plenty of dynamics. And it's really hard to keep this riff clean as well. Imagine taking uh, a pencil and you're doodling or shading. It's a very small movement that you should try to make with your picking hand. <laughs> Moving on to the next section, this is our chorus. And this is a section that also, again, just displays Jakey Lee's um, uh, incredible creativity when it comes to playing riffs. Uh, I always heard it just as F sharp five, D five, E five, and F sharp five, but that's not the case. We kick off with this F sharp minor chord, which is an E minor shape, barring at the second fret, and then playing the fourth fret of the A and the D. <laughs> And then we keep the F sharp note in all of the remaining chords. We play a D5 chord, two on the G, three on the B, but bring your thumb over to play the second fret of the, uh, the sixth string, but you also want the open A and the open D, so you get this. We then have an E5 chord, which is back to our D power chord shape. So we're playing four on the G, five on the B, then, but then you're barring across the second fret of the E, A, and D strings. So you're putting an F sharp in the bass of your uh, E5 power chord. <laughs> then we're on to the next part of the riff, and this is a really fiddly pedal tone picking riff. It starts off, it's all 16th notes again, all alternate picked. We start off on the low E string, on the sixth string at the second fret. <laughs> with two picks, and then we play four on the uh, A string, back to two on the E, then two on the A, two on the E, five on the A, and then back to two on the E, and four on the A string. So put that together. 
It's a really hard figure to get tight. So you're coming from uh, the chords F sharp minor, D over F sharp, and an E5 over F sharp. And then we have this little pedal tone riff. One more time, here we go. Then we go around the chords one more time. We have the F sharp minor. D5 with the F sharp in the bass. But this time we have an E5 with the E in the bass. So it's kind of resolving. So the, all, the, the, all the while we've had that F sharp in, it's kind of giving it a, a bit of tension. But then on that final E5 chord, you have that release. And uh, after that E5, we then go back into the next verse. So what I'm going to do to finish off, I'm going to play through the whole riff for you at a slow tempo. Hopefully you've clicked in the link in the description below and downloaded your free tab. All you have to do is enter your email address. So hopefully you've got your tab and uh, you can follow it along and let's play through the entire riff at a slightly slower tempo to make sure you get all of the chords and all of the parts down. <laughs> Okay, so there we have it. Bark at the Moon, our special quick riff for Halloween. I really hope you enjoyed this lesson. This is a really challenging riff, but it's an absolute classic piece of heavy metal guitar. Like I said, make sure you pay attention to keeping your picking hand nice and light. Pay attention to the palm mutes and also the accents of the chords. Make sure that you play it really dynamically. Okay, so if you haven't already, uh, please subscribe to the Six String Alliance channel. And once again, click the link below take you over to the Six String Alliance website. Just fill in your email address and you can download the free tab and guitar pro files for this lesson. Anyway, that's it from me. Happy Halloween, everyone. And I look forward to seeing you here very soon for more quick riffs. Bye for now.